Most people in the United States are not very good at telling fact from opinion. And that's not just my opinion. It's a fact that has been confirmed by numerous studies. One by Pew Research showed that the majority of U.S. adults can't tell the difference between factual and opinion statements in the news, and both Democrats and Republicans have a significantly higher chance of getting this wrong when viewing an opinionated statement that they all re-agree with. Unfortunately, the media these days doesn't help this problem at all. It's easy to look through so much of the corporate media and see how often facts are mixed with opinions to the point where it seems like you need a PhD in bullshitology to decipher what sorry excuse for truth can be extracted from modern clown journalism. Indeed, to say that journalistic standards have fallen down the pits in the last 30 or 40 years would be a pretty gross understatement. So in this video, we'll go over one of the lesser known solutions to the problem. The concept of scientific journalism, as proposed by Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. And it's an important solution because the more people who understand it, the better of a solution it becomes. The idea is fairly straightforward. Journalists should, whenever possible, publish in full the source material and data that they use to draw their conclusions, which allows people to check it and review it, similar to the scientific peer review process. Or as Assange himself puts it, I want to set up a new standard, scientific journalism. If you publish a paper on DNA, you are required by all the good biological journals to submit the data that has informed your research, the idea being that people will replicate it, check it, and verify it. So this is something that needs to be done for journalism as well. There is an immediate power imbalance in that readers are unable to verify what they are being told, and that leads to abuse. An example of this in action that Assange gave was that of the WikiLeaks editorial on collateral murder. When Assange appeared on the Colbert Report back in 2010, he was grilled over the fact that WikiLeaks released an editorial version of their leak on a case that involved the murder of innocent civilians by the US military and how this was covered up by mislabeling the civilians killed as insurgents. Colbert claimed that it was edited to maximize emotional response, to which Assange replied by pointing out that the unedited version and documentation was available to the public in Full, and therefore anyone can watch the full footage if they disagreed with the editorial version. This is the basic essence of scientific journalism. It is the practice that primary information and unedited footage should always be available to the public alongside any kind of news editorial that cites them. This allows consumers to be sure that what they are being told by the media is genuine information, as anyone who disagrees with the edited version would be free to review the full data themselves. Or as Assange himself puts it during the interview, our promise to the public is that we will release the full source material. So if people have a different opinion, the full material is there for them to analyze and assess. What Assange is doing here is recognizing that it's unfeasible to fit hours upon hours of raw data into a simplified report. Imagine if you were watching the news covering a story of some volcano explosion somewhere, and they proceeded to give a two-hour lecture as the news anchor read through an academic paper on geological hotspots and tectonic plate boundaries. While it would make the news report more complete doing this, it would also be horrifyingly boring to the average viewer, completely unnecessary to get the point across, and thus a massive waste of time for most people. Plus, the news anchor probably wouldn't understand half the words coming out of their own mouth. So the solution to this, of course, is to editorialize and condense everything, pack hundreds of hours of research and raw data into a 10-minute news segment. And in this case of scientific journalism, they would then make the academic papers available for download on their website. This is entirely reasonable. It saves everyone time, it allows the news to carry on, and gives viewers peace of mind that they can always check the facts themselves if they suspect something is untrue or propaganda. In other words, scientific journalism is about trust. It's about journalists maintaining a trustworthy relationship between media consumers consumers as providing primary sources and unedited versions of footage allows consumers to know that they are not being manipulated. This is the main failure with the current status quo of modern journalism, that this trust simply doesn't exist, because said primary sources are rarely made publicly available, and so propaganda and abuse such as lying through forms of bias when a story is edited is painfully easy to do. For instance, if there is a video showing person B attacking person A in self-defense, it's very easy for the media, if they want to make person B look bad, to simply clip the video and only show the part of the video where person B attacked person A, and then give their garbage opinion about how terrible person B is, with the fact that it was self-defense completely omitted. The average person, when presented with such a skewed set of facts, simply cannot tell the difference. And propagandists know this, and they exploit it to no end. News organizations aren't technically lying when a story is highly editorialized, but they are obviously not exactly always telling the truth either. This is exactly the kind of journalistic malfeasance that the scientific journalism standard would help to alleviate. Clipping a video to make an innocent person look guilty would be a waste of everyone's time if everyone expected 
contacted journalists to post links to the full unedited footage online. Most people would immediately discover the truth, and the dishonesty of the edited version would only harm the news agency's credibility. In the days of the internet, where hosting data dumps available for download is relatively inexpensive and easy to do, there is simply no excuse not to do this. But unfortunately, the opinion editorials coupled with unsourced reports continue to march on through most of the corporate media as sort of an everyday occurrence. Julian Assange's recommendation of scientific journalism and the warnings it provides against propaganda in a post-truth world goes completely ignored. In fact, I'd wager most people have never even heard of scientific journalism before, and that's probably not by accident. If the mainstream media were to talk about scientific journalism, they would be forced to provide some kind of explanation as to why their publication does not follow such standards. And again, since no good excuse for their refusal exists, they probably figure it's best to just lie by omission and not talk about scientific journalism, period. So that brings up a question. How do we get more news sources to adopt this standard? They obviously aren't interested, so how can this be a solution to our modern day problem of tabloid journalism if none of the big six are even willing to acknowledge that the problem exists? Well, here's three things we can do. First off, spread awareness of it. The more people who are aware of scientific journalism standard and how it would be a massive improvement to how the news is reported, the more people can start demanding it. And this also spreads awareness of the fact that the big six refusing to adopt this standard proves they aren't being as honest as they would like people to believe, as they would have no good reason to not adopt scientific journalism if they were. A big reason why MSM is able to get away with the tabloidism so often is because too many people simply do not know there is an alternative. This helps create the demand we need for it to be a thing, even if most of the current media insiders refuse to do it. Just increasing the demand for it opens the doors for outsiders like NTD News, for example, to adopt such a standard and thus subvert the current system by simple virtue of simply being better. It also helps us put pressure on the media as more people aware of the problem and solution means more people willing to call BS, then demand the full source when we see something that doesn't make sense. This has already been proven successful with the Nick Sandman case, where footage was dishonestly edited to make some teenager appear racist, and when people got together to make sure the full story came to light, surprise surprise, it was proven that Sandman did nothing wrong. So simply having more people know about how easy it is to dishonestly edit information to spread lies, and how easily this problem could be fixed and know that the MSM could adopt a standard to help combat it, but chooses for whatever reason not to, is definitely a great first step. Second, be the change we wish to see in the world. Those who have watched the informative videos on my channel may have noticed that when I cite a scientific study, I like to put a picture of it along with the title of the study in my video. This way anyone can simply pop the title into DuckDuckGo to check my primary source. Other YouTubers simply put links in the description, that works great too. Alternatively, if you are writing a blog or doing some podcast or even just a forum post that cites research papers, you can include direct links to your sources at the bottom. With independent creators and commenters doing a better job at journalism than actual so-called professionals, everyone can help contribute to further subverting the concurrent status quo of tabloidism. The good news is, many people are already doing this to a decent level of success, and things have already reached a point where establishment media is only able to stay relevant thanks to paid algorithm abuse. And the last, third, stop giving tabloidism your money. This one is obvious. If you are subscribed to these people, or in any relationship that involves you giving them your hard-earned cash, stop. Stop giving them your money. Pretty straightforward. This is the easiest thing that everyone can do. As long as these publications are just publishing opinion editorials without any primary source data to back their statements up, they aren't really providing us with anything of value. So refusing to give them any money is the most straightforward way to tell them that people are tired of this status quo with unethical, unsourced journalism and would like to see a change. Journalism can be better, and scientific journalism would be a step in the right direction. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, and all that stuff.